Hey, what's going on? It's Glendon with Hustlers Kung Fu. How to make money without a job. How to make a living without a job. How to get loot without a job. Tonight, we're going to discuss restaurants. They've come up six times in the last three weeks. And I've advised people successfully on how to start and keep a restaurant running. And I have not one, not two, but three clients who are thinking about it. But before we get into that, since this is the holiday weekend and once all this is over, these deals are gone. Below the video, save 90% on 26 business courses. 26, 90%, and you'll get a consult with me. But that ends tonight, which means if you see this video later, it's not no longer in effect. Cool, so let's jump into it. And I'm gonna give you first the stuff that works. And I'm also gonna give you some reasons that so many restaurants, like roughly 90% fail. And it's really interesting because you get people who wanna have this concept of a restaurant, but this is the thing. The first restaurant, I'm gonna tell you, model that works, and this is so crazy. For those of you who've been around a while, if you go to the playlist and look up my life as a day laborer, you'll see the story of when I used to work on the ice truck. Uh, this first restaurant model, make sure I got my calculators because you're not gonna believe this. And I'm not gonna believe this, but used to make incredible bank. And I'm gonna tell you how it was set up. Now, for those of you who are familiar with West End of Atlanta, over by the colleges, part of our route, we used to go up in the hood and there was this house, literally a house. It was on the left side of the street and the food was amazing. I mean, they had grandma, big mama. Hold on a second. Let me bring that down. We'll bring it a little down a little bit. And to see, they had all of the heavy duty cooks making this food. It was hen, it was, I mean, chicken, Cornish. I mean, the food was just, you put it in your mouth and your mouth had an orgasm. It was that kind of food. I mean, typically for many people, this is the kind of food that you get during Thanksgiving. You know, all these recipes, it was like that Monday through Friday, but there was a few stipulations. One, they had limited quantities. Two, they didn't have a great deal of room to sit. You know, there was a few places because usually we grabbed our food and went. And the traditional plate was seven fifty, and you didn't feel cheated when you walked out of there. So the place closed when they ran out of food. Very, very important concept. They closed when they ran out of food, and they ran out of food every day. Now, the plate was seven fifty, so we're gonna put that right there. And you should be able to see that 750, right? Okay. My estimate from the time that we stopped there, because every chance we 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 got there, because we knew that certain time it just was pointless to go over there. But they did about 300 plates a day, two seven to three hundred. So we're gonna split the difference times two seventy-five. Okay. Two thousand dollars a day, right? Cash money. Didn't take credit cards. This was cash money times five that's a week cash money okay and i think they closed for christmas so we're going to go times 50. that's what that hood restaurant was making half a million dollars a year now i checked i went back this place stayed in business for years. As far as I know, it may still be in business. But why did this work? Food, amazing, limited time to get it. Three, you had to, you were compelled to go at a certain time or you were going to miss out. And limited schedule. They wasn't open for dinner. They wasn't open for breakfast, lunch, and that was it. Simple business model. I'm going to tell you about a restaurant that I helped way back in the day when I used to live in uh, Edgewood, East Atlanta, you know, you know, Kirkwood, Inman Park, I used to live in that neighborhood. So we'll see what's in here with the questions. 
we got dude what two one two and remember if you want to start a business the link to get on is below why is Starbucks so successful even though they have such a higher pricing model wouldn't they ironically seem less prestigious less valuable if they had lower prices okay price is in material um, you know let me just say this and I'm not gonna hurt it well fuck it I'll hurt your feelings anyone complaining about the price of Starbucks coffee is broke or cheap or whatever because where I live one two three four within five square miles of where I live there are four Starbucks four <laughs> within five square miles four May, oh, at the hospital, there was another one at the hospital, so that's five. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's not price. It's marketing. It's branding. It's image. Uh, sweet Red Gypsy. Wow. What's the wow about? What's up, Benjamin? Uh, fishing for love. Should people start a food truck before getting into a restaurant business? I will address that later. Hi, where can I find a private lender so I'll be able to invest in myself in other things such as real estate? Today, we're talking about how to start a restaurant and be successful. So when we get off topic, I'm just going to tell you I'm not answering that question. And if you want to get deep into it, you can email my assistant at hustlerskungfu at gmail.com and book a consult. I'm not talking about that today. We're talking about restaurant and business models. Uh, what's up, Lamode? All right, Joe. All right, so let's get back to it. Now, I'm going to talk about another restaurant that I helped and you can go in and talk to the owner of the day. Her name is Marche uh, Sparks, and it's uh, Le Petit Marche. Restaurant, I remember when it opened, because I was living in Glenwood Park, you know, kind of close to Glenwood Park, near East Atlanta Village. And I used to go in there, and they had, they were trying stuff. They was putting out stuff, and they would just sit back and Marche on them, be like, hey, do you, do you like, like this? And she still does that to this day. She still does that to this day. And, it would be really intriguing. So they used to be open until seven, but the way the area operated became a ghost town because there was all kind of pubs and eateries and stuff. So a lot of people wouldn't even go back on the side. There was this rest, there was this bar with the chicken wings. I can't remember the name of it, but it was literally around the corner. But they were struggling. And I went in and you know they, they got on some nice meals. And I said, you know what? Why don't you open for breakfast? Everyone loves breakfast. I'm a breakfast food person. I can eat breakfast at breakfast time, lunch, late at night. Do breakfast. Open up for breakfast, right? So I was in there a lot. And then she said, yeah, well, try it. So they opened up for breakfast and they had some menus. And I go in there and she comes up and she hugs me and she shakes me. That was the best idea ever. We did more money one day of opening for breakfast than they usually did in the week. So you can understand they're still open for breakfast. Here it is, nine years later. Uh, she was recently featured in Best of Atlanta. And some other things, I say, well, do this, do this, do this. Now, I was just a customer. It wasn't a former relationship. She was a friend. We used to hang out. You know, she's still a friend. But it was that recommendation that changed. Because they were going to close. She was straight up. They were going to close. So that was the thing. Knowing what works and what doesn't work based upon the demographics of the area. Uh, let's see, George Tavers. What was the restaurant average hours that they're open? When you say around noon to four or five, if you're talking about the first example, they were open from eleven to three. <laughs> that was it. What does the startup capital for a restaurant should be? Anywhere from five thousand to hundred grand. Is there a similar process for opening the bars, opening a restaurant? No. Two different animals, two different crowds. You don't do the same thing. Totally, totally different. What's up, Thomas? Do you think having a limited menu helps with a restaurant business? It has absolutely nothing to do with it. <laughs> it has nothing to do with it. Uh, Thomas Rapley, I'm Brazilian. What's up, Brazilian? So, okay, now let's go back to another one because someone they mentioned it, a food truck. Now, food trucks don't work everywhere. What, what, what? See, the thing is, you've got the old 
the roach coach. You know, when I used to do construction, it would be this truck that would come around with pre-made sandwiches, chips, cokes, and candy, aka the roach coach. That's not really, it's a food truck, but it's not a food truck per se. A food truck is more like a hot dog cart that serves a special kind of hot dogs because there's, that's more in line with it. But someone that helped with the food truck. And the thing is, they were trying to do too much. It isn't, quote, a limited menu. It's the correct menu for your demographic. Now, the food truck was in East Atlanta. Now, what's East Atlanta? Very artsy, very um, avant-garde, very hipster. That's the word I'm looking for, very hipster crowd. So the food truck had several different items. But on Monday, it only served one thing. And on Tuesday, it only served one thing. And Wednesday, it only served one thing. And Thursday, it only served one thing. Wildly successful. Now, I can't really talk about that because that's a customer. And we've talked about this before. And she was like, don't be spreading my business. All right. So what we got in here. Should restaurants send out mass coupons to draw up business? I'm going to take it sideways because, see, this is internet bullshit. And I'm not saying you're bullshit, fishing for love. I'm going to say it's internet bullshit. I have a friend who owned a nail salon. And she did a Groupon, this coupon stuff. And I told her not to do it because everyone goes like, oh, God, 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 buy Groupon, right? Well, this is what happens. Groupon is only going to take you if you discount your services, right? So I said, don't do it. You're trying to do a high-end nail bar. You don't want to do this. This is going to set a nasty president. So she went ahead and she did it anyway. Sold like crazy. Um, did like 30 grand in just a few days. Now here's the math on that. After 30 grand, Groupon got 15. Groupon gets 50%. So she got 15. And what happened was people bought the coupons, but what do people do with Groupon coupons? A lot of folks, a certain percentage come in immediately, a certain percentage sit on it. So she was doing this discounted service for four months and it damn near put her out of business. Then she did something else I told her not to do and she went out of business. Not the thing to do. If you are an established restaurant with overage, yes. If you're brand new, fuck no. Once again, that's in that bullshit. They're like, oh yeah, do Groupon. Bad thing. Bad things happen with Groupons. So now I'm gonna go with another business model that works and this isn't a client of mine. This is something uh, I used to work in the hospital at Kennestone area Promina years and years ago. And there's this hot dog place called Brandy's Hot Dogs. That's it. It's on uh, it's near Kennestone Hospital, Marietta Boulevard, I think. This is what they serve. Spicy hot dogs with chili or you can have you can have your dog anyway. Mustard, ketchup, chili, onions, whatever. So they sell chili slaw dogs, chili slaw burgers, fries, and onion rings, and they have ice cream and chips. That's it. Business was in business before I found it, and I found it 1997. So I've known about it almost 20 years, and the menu has not changed. Now, why does this work? Number one, first people who owned the place bought the property. Very very important very very important so the building has been paid for for a long time that is the main reason that business works only open for lunch um between seven ten bucks they probably another one do two three grand a day 20 maybe about you know 12 15 grand a week so i don't know what their costs are because you know they have the building all this other stuff and then there's big staff but She's doing well. She's doing well. Let's see what we got over here. Uh, George, one guy I know had the business went out of business for the same reason. Which was that the Groupon? <clears throat> Jig of 1017. Groupon has put a lot of people out of business. Have you ever seen me do Groupon? I do heavy discounting. Like right now, 26 courses, you know, right now, instant night. That I can do a heavy discount on, but it's intellectual property. It's my stuff. 
I'm not paying any rent. Yeah, I have employees and I've got other bills, but I don't have a lot of overhead. So I can do that. Whereas if I had a, a business, a brick and mortar business and I was trying to do this, whoa. <clears throat> and also to talk about that, the discounters, if you check the model numbers for a lot of these Black Friday televisions and things, there are different model numbers than the stuff they normally sell, which means these televisions are specifically made for Black Friday with innards and components that are less expensive than the regular televisions. A lot of folks don't know that, but it's true. Look it up. Groupon. Yeah, Groupon's rough. All right, so we're going to talk about a high-end restaurant. If you're in Atlanta, I, I recommend it. Ray's on the River. Been in business since 1984. Uh, one of the first places I hit when I got here. Great seafood. But once again, solid ownership. They own the land. Recently, they tore the old restaurant down, the original restaurant down, was closed for damn near a year and rebuilt it. Now, let's talk about how could they do that. They make a lot of money. How many businesses do you know can close for one year and rebuild and go right back where they left off? People are like, we're so glad you're back. Um, one of the things is they were very well capitalized, very well capitalized. Like if you're going to play the restaurant game and you are new, you need a lot of money. You need a lot of money and a lot of connections. But typically from people who come to this channel, your best thing is going to be a single serve restaurant. You're going to serve restaurant, uh, breakfast, lunch, or something like that. You get into dinner, it gets very iffy. Why does dinner get iffy? Traffic. People like, hey, I go get some food here or take my ass home. Home's usually going to win. So single serve, just like the place over in the hood that I found out about the ice truck, uh, Brandy's Hot Dogs, Le Petit Marche's. These, this thing works. It works very, very well. And if you're going to do, because I'm going to get into bars and some other stuff in a minute, you want to do that stuff, you need to have industry knowledge or you will not make it. Uh, uh, Jig of 1017. Tonight we're talking about how to start a restaurant and be successful. Other topics will come up later. Uh, Benjamin, I do a fish fry every summer as an add on to at my detail shop, but I haven't come on with a, with a food add on. But I know I could do a restaurant because I have a head cook in so many jobs. Yeah, there's a lot of ways you can do that because if you're not going to open up a full fledged restaurant, meaning you got minimum 25 G's just laying around, not, you know, your 401k money or I don't recommend people raid their 401ks. I don't recommend, I don't, I don't, I just don't. You need that 25 to hundred G's laying around and then you need to have a solid ass plan. You gotta have a solid ass plan. So we're, we'll talk about, you know, bars. Cause see, I got one client who I've already told, don't do it because see, this is the thing. You, food is a very good part of this, but is the food at Waffle House amazing? Mm -mm, it's just good. And it's consistent. And they have a system. And if you go to this Waffle House or this one, there's not a much variance between the recipes. That's why it works, because it's consistent. If you like, hey, I just want to go get a grilled cheese sandwich, go to the Waffle House, they're going to have a grilled cheese sandwich. There is a place for it, because when you're hungry, Everybody's not looking for a gourmet experience at lunch. People are like, I need to get me something to eat. I need to get my ass back to work. So speed, a system, and a predictable menu. So let's see what we got in here. Raised on the river is right off the Chattahoochee River. Very nice. Very nice place. It's an awesome place. <laughs> All biscuits and gravies. Who's in? Chris McDonald, bad business model. Peter Thiel says it's a foolish business model. Um, I'm going to disagree with him because McDonald's is working. Burger King is working. Waffle House is working. Um, Longhorns is working. Um, what is it? Chili's is working. Um, Arby's is working. Waffle House. IHOP is working. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't think it's a bad business model. I think it's a very hard business model. I think it's a business model that you should not approach without working in the industry, which brings me up to another customer, another client on the open a restaurant. Uh, grandma died, left them a million bucks. And they were like, dude was like <sighs> popping bottles. And, you know, he was like, I want to, this was the plan. Open up a restaurant during the day and night it becomes a club. Now, this works because you got to get your liquor license and stuff. You, you'll see it. But typically, I told him, I said, how committed are you to this? How committed are you? And he said, I want to do it. I said, no, 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 no. How committed are you? Well, for this to fly the way you want it to, you need to buy the building. And the building was going to be like 750, which is going to be the majority of his money. He was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Because he wanted to buy a house. He wanted to buy a Porsche. And I said, remember, I just asked you. How committed are you? And you're already going, no, 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 no. And I was like, okay, if you go ahead and rent that building, regardless if you get a three to five years, commercial leases are usually going to be three to five, maybe seven or 10. If your club is successful, what the owner's going to do is jack the rent on you. Now, why would the owner do that? You know, you're making money, you're paying your rent on time. Well, do your hard work. You've turned that building into a destination. And they can easily rent it to someone else at a higher rate and make more money. So if you don't pay the rent, someone else will pay the rent. And the building's already permitted for alcohol. It's already permitted for this. So a lot of the stuff that's a pain in the ass to get permitted for and licensed for, it's already set. So you're trapped. It's like you pay the higher rent or you have to move. And this is what's going to be really, really hard. You would think that you can move through three four blocks away and most of your people will follow you and it's a real interesting phenomenon because it's the same thing like when you do an email list like if you i've done this a few times like when you just like completely destroy your email list and like delete it and it's like start over a lot of folks will not jump on the new email list so when you move and you don't have a real strong uh, loyalty with your your market you could go out of business so i explained all this to him didn't want to listen because he was about pop, pop those bottles, right? Found the building. I was his consultant. I told him not to do it. He rented it. He um, got a real good deal. He negotiated it down. He's like, see, he wanted this. I'm in here for this. I said, okay. Went ahead, got the building up, uh, got him some social media chicks. Uh, they were making it happen. Some stuff happened. Uh, this is why I can't say the name. Um, Someone was shot there, some other stuff. The owner of the building, because in the lease, there were clauses. And once they had like they had four incidents, right? Boom, 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 right? So there was clauses in the lease, and the owner evicted him and rented it to someone else, made more money. Successful, but see, he didn't own the venue. He owned the ideal and the concept, but he didn't own the venue. So boom, he was out. Um, probably went through half a mil. Not much to show for. So for all you guys who want to open up bars and buy the rounds and you you even very much have to understand that's a relationship business. That's a very social business. Uh, Sean Combs, who's a very smart businessman, his shit didn't work. It worked in the beginning and over time it degraded. Uh, local guy here, Frank Ski, he, he did one same thing because this is one of the things that happens with that type of business model. It's very much dependent on people who are under 30. So this is what happens every five to 12 years. That under group of 30 people like something different. Something else is hot. So it's very, very hard to keep a place hot. Now, here's another bar place. And for those of you in Atlanta, it's called Bigelow's. One of my friends is like Bigelow's with the bigger holes be Bigelow's. They own their damn building. They've been in business for years. Same thing. The drinks are so stiff, they can carry you out. Uh, the fish fry, when they give you food, the food's literally hanging off the plate. Strong drinks, good food. The dance floor is packed, and they own the building. You go to Bigelow's, you're going to have a good time. Even if you've never been there because you're going to see some wild shit, you get to watch some people. It works. But once again, they own the building. <laughs> 
I'm gonna say that like five or six or seven times. All right, so what we got in here? What do we have in here? False equivalences, I agree. You're talking about Peter's um, still, because I mean, someone else is gonna come along and make uh, food trucks are killing it. In the right demographics with the right owner, food trucks are killing it. I'm gonna tell you about another restaurant. Um, Melissa V wanted to say I did 500 in yard in sales at my yard sale this weekend, and thanks to you. Thumbs up from Melissa V. Thumbs up. Listen, took action, made money. Listen, took action, made money. Real simple. Well, Eric Williams. Nope, folks, we keep going to the same location. I'm telling you, you if you're gonna do that bar popping bottles, your best investment is to own the building outright. Because even if your business, you don't want to do it, you can rent the building. We don't use that word, Chris. Uh, what moron spends his inheritance on the restaurant? Okay, let me just, all right. You get a lot of people who come into money from the parents or the grandparents or something. And many of these people do not have financial guidance of people they trust that is um, you know just for anyone you come across a million dollars inheritance uh, my advice to you sit on that money for three to six months and really think about it um, and one thing you should do off the cuff immediately is take 150 250 grand and buy yourself a 10 15 year annuity thank you you're, you're welcome you're welcome uh, we have to do better I totally agree Martin, precarious is a favorite word of mine. Martin, are you in the UK since you spelled favorite that way? Rev Rabbas, is restaurant business insurance expensive when dealing with claim food? Okay, good question. Restaurant is great. First of all, when you open up a restaurant, you're not going to have just one insurance policy. You're going to have a few. First of all, workers' comp, because you're going to have wait staff. Some happen to them, someone cuts their arm, they're not their, their hand. And you don't have workers comp you could literally go out of the business so you're gonna have workers comp that's a form of insurance you're gonna have property insurance and you're gonna have um what's the name of it it's not an incidental community because it's like you're gonna have three or four different insurance policies like if you go ahead and do a big convention in the hotel there's an insurance policy you have to buy to that the, the hotel will not let you hold that event unless you show them a certificate of insurance so you're going to have to have all of those insurance things and they've got limits and they're not cheap. This is one of the reasons that I keep saying, if you don't open a restaurant, you need to be very, very well capitalized or you need to mitigate the risk. This is why a food truck is a great idea. And this is why restaurants that open for breakfast or lunch, because they eliminate the risk. People usually go in and out. Let's see. And Austin, park your food trunks next to drunk frat, frat houses. They buy. I can see that. Chris McDonald, right? Demographics or everything. Jig of 1017. There's a food truck here in Knoxville that sells fish sandwiches and fried green tomatoes and killing it. Okay. Jig of 1017 just came in here. There's a food truck here in Knoxville that sells fish sandwiches and fried green tomatoes and killing it. You can make a, a lot of money selling one damn thing. You got to be consistent. You got to be good. You got to be consistent. Erica Williams, I got an inheritance open up a coffee shop. Trust me, <laughs> a bunch of open bars. No, <laughs> damn. Oh, uh, just liability with food truck. I did a hot car. I did a hot dog one for a bit. Yeah, because problem is, unless like, let's take a food truck. You're limited by what that truck can carry and how many people can serve. So what you have to do is build a following. Food trucks are really interesting because they mesh very well with social media. Because some food trucks will just like tweet, but, but we're going to be at the corner of such and stuff here. Um, name a good food truck in Atlanta. Just go to Creative Loafing. A lot of better stuff's going to be Inman Park. It's going to be, and also a lot of food trucks do festivals. 
See, there are people who have food trucks who don't run them 24, you know, they don't run them five days a week. They'll run them like festivals only or events. So that's another thing. I don't really have any food trucks that I go to here. I used to go to a lot of stuff when I lived in East Atlanta. East Atlanta or downtown Atlanta or in town, it's a, it's a, it's a foodies haven. But yeah, this this happens. Now, one client I'm working with who who I already said don't do it. Because here's the thing. Good food is I know it's gonna sound strange, but good food or great food, I should say great food, or like the, the place in the hood, the food was amazing. I mean, it was just like, you know, your grandmother and your aunts were in the kitchen. I mean, it was just awesome, but it was it was very well seasoned. But the thing is. They had, I'm quite sure because the place was in business for a while and they kind of figured some stuff out. But good food is maybe 20% of your success. I know it sounds like, whoa, whoa, the good food should be like 90%. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. There's location, there's demographics, there's setup, there's systems. There's a lot that goes into it. Melissa V, well, city's rules is what made it hard for me. They had a ton of rules for us. Yes. Go back to the permitting. You can have a hot dog cart and literally be paying a G or more a month in expenses, license, insurance, and stuff, depending upon the city. Yeah. Being someone who had a physical business at one point, to me, it just seems like the municipalities are damn like anti-business because of all the hoops you have to jump through. And I have someone right now who came to me a little late, but they got the space, they rented it, they've put money in it. And the government said, you need to do X, Y, and Z. And the cost, the feasibility studying some other stuff is like 150 G's. They got the money, but I don't care if you got 2 million, 150 G's, just like, you, you feel that, you're like, ooh. So, this is the stuff when you're dealing with municipalities. There's always a lot of stuff there. All right, what we got here? For a brand new food truck, how much? You said brand new, like brand new, brand new. I mean, a truck would be 40 to 100 Gs. Just depends on how big, what you got an outfit. I mean, think of a food truck as an RV with extended stoves and not as many seats. So, you could, you know, just kind of, it just depends. Uh, best use would be to get a used one because a lot of people go out and they do a food truck and they don't, and they've never talked to anyone like me and they got this esoteric menu or all this strange stuff and they never worked on their marketing plan. They just got the truck, painted it real nice, wrote some stuff on it and went a few places and sold a few and then it was just like, blah, blah, blah. Do you suggest testing your menu before actually getting a building for a restaurant? Oh, one of the better questions. Hell yes. Once you get that building, you're like locked in. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Definitely. And you can test stuff with your friends. I mean, you could test stuff at your job. If you get 50 people who be like, mm, that's slamming, food's good. 50 people, that's a good sample size. You know, you, you get 50 people and half the people are like, ooh, I like it. I wouldn't go for it with that if half are like, mm, I don't know about this. That's, 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 you know, it's called sampling, but yeah. Uh, for one done, I built my own out of a used U-Haul for 5K. Okay, with Melissa V, we're going to talk about that. All right. As someone was talking about demographics. Now, if you're at a festival or a rave or something like that, you could probably come up with a converted school bus or an RV or something like this because these people are partying. There's alcohol. There's all this energy and stuff, right? I don't really care about that. Now, you're in Inman Park. Or are you going downtown Atlanta? The reception you're going to get if you drive up in something, and it doesn't have to be new, okay? Let's be clear. It doesn't have to be new, but it has to be presentable. You come up with something very presentable, very clean, that doesn't scream cheap, you can charge more money. 
So just depends. Fishing for love, you you reach your question quota. You know, if you want to consult, hit up my assistant at hustlerskungfu at gmail.com and we can do that for you. All right, so let's talk about cost of a business. All right. My rule is you should have 25,000 cash liquid, 25 G's, not on your credit card, not in the 401k, 25,000 minimum, and that's going to be a one event restaurant. Like you're going to do breakfast, or you're going to do lunch, or maybe a combination of breakfast and lunch. If you're going to get a liquor license and you're going to be serving alcohol, 50 to 75, because depending upon the municipality, <laughs> Depending on what was there, depending on people feel, depending on how many businesses are there with liquor licenses already, because all that shit comes into play. Um, it can be a bit, it can be expensive. You might even have to pull in an attorney if you get challenged, because just going in and filling out paperwork, so what? <laughs> when you're dealing with the city, understand you're dealing with fiefdoms. And what I mean is you're dealing with demigods. It's like, I'm the civil engineer. I'm the approving authority. I mean, essentially, there's one person down there who can like sign off for some, or maybe there's a commission, and they got you by the nuts or the nipples with clamps. They got your ass because the way it works, you can't get the liquor license before you get the spot. <laughs> so you got to go ahead and make the investment of getting the building and doing certain things and passing code, and you got to go ahead and do all this stuff. So essentially, you need to have a really good, strong business model to sell food because you already have to be open to even get your liquor license. Now, don't correct me. I mean, I'd be like that everywhere, but that's what I've seen. What do you think of partnerships to start in a restaurant? If you start a partnership with someone who has experience in the food industry, good. If both of you have never started a restaurant, bad idea. Uh, Gordon Ramsay's a good leader in the food industry, very down to earth, no nonsense, but on point. Yeah, he's got years and years of experience of doing that. But the money also, if you got to really look at why you're starting this business. If you're starting this business to have like an ever going, always going on party, uh, you're always out there being the man or the woman, you know, popping bottles and stuff. Typically, from what I have seen, those fail the highest because they're more into it for the emotional reason. So a lot of the business stuff that needs to be looked at is never looked at until it's too late. So food truck, five to 25,000. Physical location, 25 to 75. If you're gonna do fine dining, 150 to a million. Now let's talk about fine dining because most people, that's a hard one to pull off because with fine dining, you have to have a publicist. You have to appear in magazines. You there's a, you you got to be in the, you know like in Atlanta we've got Atlanta magazine. You need to have journalists come. You need food critics. You need all of that stuff because you can build it and you can put it in a good location. Uh, where I live, recently this place opened and they were killing it. Like for those of you who don't know, nextdoor.com is a social network for communities. Like if you live in a neighborhood with four or 500 houses, you can be in nextdoor.com. Well, this place opened and they were merciless. I mean, you think the internet's cruel. Oh, we went in there in the Sunday and I mean, they had some growing pains, you know, they were real receptive and they finally worked it out. Cause it was like half the neighborhood was like, we want this place to succeed. The other half was like, Oh, it's horrible. And, you know, not to be elitist, for those of you, you know what, just do it. Google Chastain Park in Atlanta and just Google the home prices. So you, you'll know what kind of folks you're dealing with. And it's just, but they were capitalized. And because you, you're going to need to ride out some bad reviews. Because Yelp, because one person go to Yelp and fuck up your whole reputation. And it may not even be true. So it's a lot to think about. Uh, well, the city permit was cheap, but they would not let me open for events after 5 p.m. and such. See, that, that's, that's another pain in the ass. Uh, Chris McDonald, municipalities can at times act anti-small business agents while allowing you for open rent seeking from larger entrenched companies. That's called favoritism, and it's very real.
Uh, my brother is a dental tech, and I'm thinking of joining him so I could start working from home. I don't know what you mean. Hey, for anybody that's new that's jumping on here, we're talking about how to start a restaurant and be successful. That's the focus of the topic. So other stuff will probably be ignored or I'll make fun of you. Now, what is a good business model to model? Now, here in town, we've got this place called, it's not Sonny's. What? Damn. I just, it just escaped my, I can't think of the name, but um, there's four locations, uh, they're family owned, and they follow a very similar thing. They don't open for breakfast, they open for lunch, and I think they close at seven or eight. So they're only open like seven hours. Another reason for this is the people, your shifts, because when you're doing like breakfast all the way to like dinner, that's three shifts. That's more insurance. Like, yeah, later you stay open. I mean, all this stuff. When you go for your, you apply for your insurance policy, they're going to ask you a shitload of questions. And you can just say one thing that can make your policy 20, 30% higher. Just answering one question. So typically find a business you like, a restaurant model you really, really like, and go there and eat and take a notebook and write down what they do that you like and write down what you don't like and that write down how can you make it better eat there go to a few places and this is something that just cracks me up i've talked to i don't know how many people uh the people marche well marche actually her motivation for opening the restaurant was she went to france and she and she wanted to bring that experience back here so it wasn't about the money it was emotional, but it was a good one because she thought that people would enjoy the culture like she did. But and she went there and she went to a lot of those restaurants. A lot of people will not do that kind of due diligence. And when I say do this, I'm talking about for months, not a week or two, for months, because you want to catch them during several seasons. You want to catch them during the summer. You want to catch them during the winter. It's typically for a lot of businesses, summer stuff drops off. Uh, there's another restaurant I'm going to actually tell you about how it works because that's a new thing. I'm going to ask her a few questions. Uh, it's cheatable. In Seattle, we have the best food trucks. Y'all got spanked by Tampa today. Uh, Rev, Rev, many fake, yep, posts. I mean, it's it's a problem. Uh, Rev, or, or, yes, Rev, so I've seen this in article. Scary shit for those getting into it. Uh, cheatable food, cost, process, people, products. Uh, Gary Harvey, I'm at a restaurant at work now. <laughs> All right, so Gary knows how to stuff because you, you've you've got to have somewhat of a concept. Now, one of the things is it doesn't have to be new. It doesn't even have to be earth shattering. Uh, five guys, they serve burgers and hot dogs and fries and peanuts. That's it. It's just whatever you serve, you got to be really, really good with it. You know, you've got to be consistent with it. But typically, you got to do some research on this because this is a fantasy for many people. For people, it's a goal. And there's another one that I recently opened here. It's a guy from France. It's a restaurant and bakery. Uh, he had to go in with, with just the kitchen. Kitchen had to be 500 Gs. Just the kitchen because there's this glass window and there's a large eating area and you can get quiche and baguettes and all this French food. Um, they went in with a lot of money, a lot of money. And they went in to get the older, retired, rich crowd, which they got at lunch. Because whenever I go at lunch, that's all I see. I used to call them the Buckhead Bettys. I make bank as a waiter. Depending on the restaurant, especially like in France, you know, you have waiters that work at one restaurant their whole life. It's very different. Uh, the Hectorex, the restaurant business is a fickle mistress. Yes and no. A lot of people get into it and they don't know what they're dealing with. That's really the cause because anyone thinks, I could just open up a restaurant and my mama makes the best chicken and it don't fly because they're not business people. It's working though, not all peaches and cream. I imagine so. Definitely. Now, another thing with the restaurants. Um, let me tell you about this place that's called Buttermilk. Okay, this is another uh, 
farm to table, locally sourced ingredients. Now this place only opens for breakfast through lunch. I think they open at eight and I think they close at two-ish or three. And on Sundays, there's a waiting line. The menu's very, they test their menus. They've got this chicken business that they tested for like months before they added it to the menu, which lets me know that they had experience in the kitchen because the owner, I think she's like 29 and she's very earthy, hipster, very much into it. You see her in the kitchen, you don't even know she owns the, owns the place. Um, good model, don't know if they own the building because it's in a house. I don't know what was there before. I don't even know how long it was open, but it works very well. And it's an expensive place because you go in there and eat. You're coming out 15, 20 some dollars with tip for a small entree. So cheatable perception. Aaron Hudson. What do you think about keeping a piece of place open until 1 a.m.? In my city, very few restaurants are open late. Well, let's ask yourself this. How many people order a, a pie at 1 a.m.? Think about that. Do you think there are enough people who would be ordering a big, heavy, high-calorie pizza at 1 a.m.? Could be. I don't know, because you it's up to you to do your research. Uh, the realest truth, MLL, the restaurant business is the fastest way to lose your money, guaranteed in my opinion. If you don't know what you're doing, I mean, the restaurant business is like dancing with a, 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 a bull. If you know what you're doing, you're the matador, you got the cape, you got your sword, you get out the ring alive. You don't know what you're doing, the bull wins. And we know the bull wins, that means you lost. So if you're in the college town, yes, because the thing is, once again, it's not about hours. You got to really think about this. As a business, you got to have your business hour for the highest concentration of when people are going to eat. And that's why a lot of restaurants after lunch and breakfast, there's a few places uh, when I had my local meetup group and no, I'm not going to do that again. We used to meet at this place called, um, the flying biscuit. I would go in there sometimes and between six and then closed eight, between uh, six and eight, nobody in there. Killing that breakfast, killing it at lunch. That's where they made the bulk of their money. I mean, they could literally close at about three and probably not lose that much money. So that that's the whole thing. Cause when I talk to people about this, it's mostly romance. About being that man or being that woman, I own a restaurant, you know, pouring people free drinks and stuff like that. And oh, from the food truck, I mean, not the food truck, but the ice truck. We used to run up a lot of times with the liquor guys. And I actually did, there's this place that was called, what is it? It's in Smyrna. Yeah, I did a lot of stuff here at Labor Pool. United, I think, United Distributors. And I actually went out on a liquor truck and man, here's something that's gonna blow your will. Sometimes some of these restaurants were getting twenty to fifty thousand dollars worth for beer and alcohol and one delivery. And I know there's some places we hit up twice a week. And I I mean I saw the invoices. I was just like, oh my God. But you know, you I mean, seriously, so you're going to be serving alcohol. You better have a very good bartender. Uh, the Hectorics, I think the less experience you have, the smaller the startup should be. I think all of those famous athletes that lost their asses on restaurants. I'll agree. Uh, recently, and this is a little different, Damon John and another person got with this clothing line, and they lost like $7 million. Damon was on it, some other person, I can't think of their name, and it just didn't fly. A lot of uh, celebrity-backed businesses just don't do well because I may like you as an actor, and I'll go, oh, Denzel in that movie? I'm going. Russell Crowe's in that movie? I'm going to check it out. What? Iron Man? Yeah, I'm there. Iron Man's opening a restaurant? Mm, I don't know about that. 
Uh, I've been in the produce business for 30 years, seeing many come and go, but just like housing, people got to eat. Mr. Sadie, 123. Another thing, spoilage. Restaurants go through a lot of food that they, they throw a lot of food away every day. I mean, it's boggling how much food they throw away. So that's something else that you've got to factor in. Going back to my first example of the place, they had no spoilage. They've cooked limited numbers of plates every day, and we had to hustle to get there if we wanted that food. So they didn't have any spoilage. So they eliminated um, operating hours. They eliminated spoilage. They took cash, no credit card machine. Like I said, they, it, was, it was a good business model. And from what I've helped people do and from what I've experienced, if you're not very well capitalized enough to hire a publicist to, to do certain things, you need to do with a single serve type restaurant versus trying to do fine dining. Fine dining is something that fine dining is an art. It's, it's very, it's very, it's where people go for experiences, celebrations. I mean, that's some real high level stuff. So, Definitely. Uh, Gary Harvey, yes. On the uh, throwing away the food, I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot. Benjamin, should you concentrate on having a typical menu selection and great cooks or a different menu, rare food, created dishes? Mm -mm. Hey, hey. The success is the system, the location, and marketing. Let me say it. Waffle House. Is their food earth shattering? Nope. One of the most successful restaurant chains ever. <laughs> most people don't like their job, so why would they want to get into a restaurant business which is so hands-on? Because they don't know what they're getting into. They have no clue. They look at TV and all these shows and someone opens up the restaurant and all of their magical friends come and people popping bottles and it's like, tonight, we toast to you, Bree. You did it. You did it, right? You know all that shit's fantasy. <laughs> they don't know. <clears throat> uh, Chris McDonald, what about estimated legal funds to predict against losses? That's what your insurance is for. There is no way you can save up to protect yourself against the, the lawsuits. You need insurance. You need the proper LLCs and that structure. That's to protect you against lawsuits because a lot of uh, liability policies have caps. So they could sue for $8 million, but the policy is only going to pay $1.2. I mean, they can get a big ass judgment, but policy is only going to pay $1.2. That's what that stuff's for. That's why uh, there are people who open up restaurants and they don't have this insurance. And it goes bad, it goes real bad. Uh, the Real Truth MLL, candy from, <laughs> oh God, candy from Real Housewives of Atlanta is opening a restaurant down there in the ATL. Want to see how it flies, just so it happens that you're talking about this tonight. Depends upon the food. Depends, because see, she's got the marketing ability since she has a show, but let me go back to Justin's with Sean Puffy Gomes, who had a lot more, who had more. Who had way more star power. I mean, he's a legitimate business mogul worth like probably half a billion dollars. And his shit didn't fly. So it's not about star power. It's about why would someone come here and eat for 10 years? No one ever asked themselves that question. Why would someone come here and eat for 20 years? What are we going to build here? They don't ask. It's all about popping those bottles. Let's do it now. Uh, let's bring mom in. Let's bring in my cousins and get them jobs and all the other stuff, which is cool and worthy. But if your business model does not make profit, unless you have unlimited money, and some people do to funnel into it, it's not going to fly. It's just not. It's not. So I don't know. I, I can't really speak on it until you told me about it. I had no clue. It's just I will say with an educated perspective of when – celebrities open up businesses that are outside of their core expertise, the outcomes are usually not good. Usually. I could be wrong. Um, Ted Turner opened up Ted's and shit's, the chain's been in business for like 12, 15 years. So Captain Courageous struck again. 
Seems less risky to get into a franchise versus starting a new restaurant. <laughs> My dear friend, you have no clue to how wrong that is. All right, let me tell you how McDonald's works. Everyone that knows anything about McDonald's, McDonald's is not a McDonald's Inc. on the Fortune 500. It's not a restaurant company. It's a real estate holding company. When you buy into the McDonald's franchise, they lease you the building. And if you underperform, they can snatch that shit from you and give it to someone else. <laughs> That's risky, bro. <laughs> and a lot of these franchises have that. Uh, I agree. The Hector, I agree that owning your business is very important. Living in New York City. Mm hmm. I have seen a lot of business restaurants go out of businesses because the landlord increased the rent. I, I mean, I've seen this with restaurants. I've seen this with bars. I've seen this with uh, clothing stores. Landlords ain't stupid. Her mom, her mom and mother-in-law run it. They said Southern style home cooking. Okay, Mr. Sadie 123. Uh, Gary Harvey, good menu, not great, decent prices, quality service. Get comfortable, get comfy saying certain ma'am a lot. Chris McDonald, franchises are expensive. Franchises, and also, they're not going to talk like McDonald's. I think you need to have 1.2 mil or 2 million liquid before they will talk to you. Uh, I could be wrong. I've not done a McDonald's franchise years and years ago. I looked at one, and at that time, you need to have 1.2 mil liquid. No, just there was no point even trying to get into it. Uh, you can get into a Subway for about 25, but I have a friend who owns three, and the reason he owns three is like I couldn't make a living with one. And he actually owned, yeah, he owned four. He recently closed one because it was seriously underperforming. I mean, they serve breakfast and lunch, and he was open to like eight. And it was always a ghost town in there, which is real interesting. And this kind of goes back to what people want because there's one restaurant here, another restaurant here, and there's a steakhouse. So there was a bunch of people in there coming for food, but they weren't coming for Subway sandwiches at that time of night. Going back to the person who was talking about, you know, uh, a pizza joint at 1 a.m. It might fly, as uh, Melissa V said in the college town, but doesn't fly everywhere. In peak season, I make twelve fifty, fifteen hundred a week as as a, as a summer. But you'd be running your ass off because I know. This friend of a friend who used to work at Bones, I don't know, which is a very high end steakhouse. And she was at a party and she was driving the Range Rover. And she's like, Yeah, I'm a server. And people were like, How the hell do you afford a Range Rover? And she said, I do six figures a year. Oh, if you can get into one of those kind of restaurants, which there's only going to be so many in the city. I mean, Atlanta, uh, Ray's servers are probably doing 50 to 70, if not more, Bones. Um, I don't know if Ruth, the fish house, I mean, it just depends on the restaurant. It also depends upon the clientele because you go somewhere and dinner's 300, that's a 30 to $50 tip. You serve six people like that in one night, that's $300 for you. Ain't many places like that. I live in a tourist area. Gary Alexis 313. Once you get the business running, how do you hire if you're by yourself? I do not recommend opening a restaurant by yourself. I think that is foolish and crazy. You you don't do that. It will overwhelm you unless it's like a, a hot dog cart or something like that or a food truck. And even then, uh, I know this guy had a barbecue truck. He was um, he was making money, but he's killing himself. Uh, fishing for love. This seems to be the worst time to get into the restaurant business while the competition. Mm -mm. Nope, because probably 50, 60% of the business, restaurant businesses that are open there are going to be closed next year. Unless it's a franchise or some other stuff. Uh, there was this place that served these really gourmet burgers that was in a place that this pizza place is in. The pizza place is definitely doing way better than that burger place did. Uh, that McDonald's started an all-day breakfast and Pete, were they hurting what? I don't know. I really don't know. I just know that, you know, I'm a breakfast person, and when I made that suggestion to my friend, her business took off. So, I mean, it's a good business model. Uh, 
uh, Gary Harvey. Every restaurant I've ever worked for, they were partners. This is not a business you get into by yourself. I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, Melissa V, I did it on my own very hard. Uh, Gary Harvey's, I've been in the restaurant business 15 years. Aaron Hudson, should you hire employees right away or try to run your as a partner since you get it up and going? All right, let me give you a game plan. You know, I said this before, but we got new people here. And for those of you who want to take part of the extended Black Friday deal, which will disappear later on, but right now, 26 business courses and a consult with me, 90% off the links below. And it's a G. So just letting you know before you click and be like, oh, hell no. It's a G. Because some people will pay it, also won't. I understand that. All right. So from the top, if I were interested in opening a business, this is what I would do. Number one, I would spend six months to a year researching the marketplace that I want to enter. I will eat at every restaurant that is comparable to mine, and I will see what they're doing right or what they're wrong for a year. Once I got that together, I would then sit down and talk with not one, not two, but three partners. There would be one partner who would be like uh, Gary, 15, 20 years experience in restaurant. That would be the operating partner. He would not be a full equity partner, but he would get some, get a little equity because, you know, we're partners, maybe 10%. But he would be the dude running the store and he would get a salary. Then I would like kick back and my other partner would kick back. We would be the financial partners and he would, we would make sure he run and we would just sit back. And then we would have, least 150 in the bank after the building is up after the equipment is ordered and everything because we got to market it so and we would hire full staff immediately because th this is the thing going back to what gary said you have this big swank ass restaurant right nice sign poorly trained staff don't know what they're doing or you get busy you can't serve the crowd that could put you out of business so i would overhire I would actually have more people than I need. So no one's waiting because once again, food don't have to be great. If people are hungry, if it's price is right and you get their food quick and they're happy with the service, they'll come back. So I would overhire. I would not, this, this is not some, I know someone else and I'm not going to mention his name because I know he watches this and he had a really good paying job. He got into the business. He had a partner and they were fucking, she and he broke up she jumped out half the people went to her new spot and about 18 months later he was out of business so i wouldn't even have you know you know uh, i would definitely have a manager and then i will hire someone to take his place in case he bounces <laughs> governments of leeches that's why the prices are high Hilarious, hilarious. But yeah, that's what I would do if I was interested in the restaurant business. Because I, like I said, I've helped a few people do it and I've seen it. Because, all right, this is my thing. You know, how some of the people play Warcraft, some people play games. Uh, my hobby is studying businesses. I sit down and do this just for fun. And if I was going to open up a restaurant and I wanted to do two concepts, I would open up two restaurants. I would not try to cram it all in there. It would probably be a breakfast, lunch type deal. Uh, the Hector, sweat equity. I used to work for a very successful restaurant who did it right and now has multiple locations across the country. Sure, yeah. I mean, this restaurant thing is, this ain't nothing to play with. And this is why I'm doing the video because, like I said, uh, I've talked to a lot of people. I've got a few clients who are, like, on the bubble of doing it. And my thing is, Anytime that you are talking about opening up a physical based business, you need to have some money. This is not something that you could just kind of, you know, hustle your way into it because there, there's, there's so many more. Number one, the government's going to be in your business. You're going to have food inspectors. You have a liquor license. You're going to have the liquor commission, whatever that may be. And you're going to have inspections. You're going, there's so many moving parts. And this is too much for one person. It's just too much for one person. It's ridiculous. I would not recommend that. So anyone's got a question on opening a restaurant? Because I'm telling you, uh, I'm getting this. And this is a video for people that 
will come to me and they want to talk about it. And I'm like, watch this video. If you need any more help, then we can talk. We're talking about restaurants, how to start a successful restaurant. I don't go off topic anymore. That hurts SEO and other things. So that would probably be on another stream because, oh, just to let you know, there will be no more like driving videos for a while or everything will be live stream probably until the beginning of the year. Then I'll sit down and reevaluate. Uh, rugged collars, restaurants, 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 making me hungry. What about investing in them like Taco Bell, sucker for the Taco Bell? Um, okay, here, here it is from an investment standpoint. Since unless you build, bring the money, hire the team, you get more money. But it's quote like, let's say a restaurant's two million to start, right? And you got 500,000 and four of you get together and you put 500,000. You're only going to be entitled to 25% of profits, <laughs> which is good. But, you know, that, that's the investment thing. The investment thing to me has never been super attractive because this is why all of these venture capital firms invest in these guys and get in early. So if they have an exit or they sell or they scale, they get like crazy money, like, the people who put mo money in Facebook early, they became billionaires. That's how much their investment works. So investing, unless you just got a lot of spare cash, that's real dicey too. Uh, the Hector, also IRS will be looking close at your restaurant too. Mark Shapiro, most restaurants have separate management for the front or house versus back or, or house kitchen. It's too much for one person to handle. I, I totally agree, I totally agree. You lost a lot of people when you said startup capital is 5K to 100K. For business, dang, shit. Viewers don't want to hear that. They're trying to get in for the low, low. Well, one of the things we do here at Hustlers Kung Fu, help people make a living without a job, is I'm going to give you the truth. And a restaurant, when people come to me, I usually shy them away from restaurants because typically they have no experience. They don't know the industry. They've done no marketplace research and it's just destined to fail because not because they're stupid. It's just there's so much work that isn't done. And then when we start putting out these numbers, you know, be like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. I tend to love the tiny places if that helps anyone. I mean, all right. You no, know, let me look for the folks who came in late. Let me just go ahead and give you this. Um, the hood restaurant, okay? Plate was seven fifty, and they did like two fifty to three hundred a day. So we hit at two fifty. So that's eighteen seventy five cash every day, Monday through Friday, times five. It's nine thousand a week, and we're gonna go times fifty because let's say close for two weeks, close to half a million a year, right? Single event restaurant, one, two, three, maybe a staff of six. So let's say six people. Let's just crank it up. Let's just say they're caking them off real nice, even though I don't think so. So they were open four hours. So let's say six times 10. I don't even have to do all that. 60 times four. Oops. 60 times four. Ah. 60 times four is 240. So, and let's say food was 300 plus 300, 540. And let's go with 250 times seven minus 540. That's still a, over a G a day after paying for expenses. And I know for a fact the building was owned. The house they were in was paid off. So they only had property taxes and insurance. So times five times 50. So after expenses, the top 0.5% of income. Five days a week, lunch only. So you can make a grip. And also, I mean, they, they knew what they were doing. So they were buying food in bulk. I'm, I'm quite sure because I mean, the place was in business for years. 
Probably still is. I haven't been over there in a while. Uh, yep, we have a tiny taco shack here. There are always a line down the ro side of the road. Uh, Flying Biscuit, the owner of that, started uh, the Leah's Chicken Shack, which is in East Atlanta. Been open now seven years. Now, why? Now, there's no place to sit inside. Only place you can sit is outside. Most people come and grab their food and go. Isn't open for breakfast, but I think they open at 12 and stay open at 10. But it's in East Atlanta. So, once again, uh, I'm just giving you a little bit because I, I talk, try to talk people out of the restaurants. <laughs> it's a lot of work. And some people, it's just like, I got to do it. And, you know, some people are really successful with it. So, are there any questions about how to open up a restaurant? Because I gave you the real numbers, and that's really cheap. Because if you're going to do like some um, new concept restaurant, you got like 3,000 square feet, two to six mil, easy easy and this is new fixtures new furniture build out permit oh yeah easy yeah i started talking about real money folks like disappeared <laughs> all right doesn't look like there's any questions just for those of you who are still here this is the extended blacks friday sale for those of you who come later it does not exist it, it disappears at 11 59 tonight it's directly under the video uh, is this a weird question? Where do you find partners? It's not a weird question. It's also kind of more of a sophistication thing. If you're going to start a restaurant and you're going to get partners, it needs to be somebody you know, it needs to be somebody that you know well enough to know that they have money, and y'all all have to trust each other to sign documents and get on the LLC. So it's not really where you find partners. It's like, how do you become a partner? That link's working. Hold on, I'm going to lose. Do, 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 do. I just clicked on it, and it works. <laughs> so, don't know what to tell you on that. Hold on a second. Because what you do, I sent this email out earlier, and, huh. I don't know. Maybe this will work a little bit better. Let's go back. See if this works. <laughs> that might be crazy. Let's see if that works. Oh, the link I put in the comments, it seems to work. Uh, since this is the end, will you be doing the video on the party on those party buses? You mean like food trucks? Maybe I've got someone who has a food truck. They may get it rolling or not. I don't know yet. Just kind of depends. Um, I got someone else I'm working with. We haven't decided if they're going to do a food truck or a physical location. And more than likely, I will not be able to talk about that. So, any more questions on how to start a restaurant? I mean, serious. Like, um, no, this isn't to dissuade you. This is to give you the information you need so you can be successful. Any more questions on how to start a restaurant and how it will work and all this? Because the thing is, like I said, it's not to dissuade you. It's just to give you a realistic information on what you're getting yourself into because a lot of people start restaurants and i'm talking about athletes um and no one around them tells them this stuff and they get into it and then it fails and they're like oh oh well we'll try something else i'm just like it didn't have to be like that what do you think about drink focus shops like growing milk tea trend i would stay away from that let's kind of step back a bit what seems to work what's coffee there's starbucks there's caribou there's um seattle's best what's a cup of coffee why do people go to starbucks and caribou saves them time people are addicted to coffee coffee is a cultural iconic drink it's proven. So 
people go to coffee and they need their jolt. It saves them time. They have their affinity brand, right? Um, what's this thing? Milk tea. I don't know what it is. It could be, but see, you said trend. Will it be something that will like be established and be around for years and years? Because thing is, I would not invest a bunch of money into a physical business with a three, five, six year lease on a trend. That's just me. Oh, like the furry party bus. No, I probably won't be doing that. Probably will not be doing that. Yeah, this is restaurants. Like um, the way the channel's going, we're going to be talking about, you know, the real nuts and bolts of a lot of different businesses, a lot of things. Because, uh, like I said, I'm getting new clients who are doing different things versus the old stuff. I will probably do an Amazon conversion type series at some point because I'm getting a lot of people because um, I haven't kept up with it. I'm no longer in the, those groups, but apparently Amazon has lost his mind on a bunch of people recently. Some guy, 13 years, they just suspended his account and he freaked out and he didn't make any money for seven days. And they, they I mean, he posted this blog post. And that's when we got his account back and I'm like, it's just wow. So we'll be talking about that. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Don't forget you need to be able to get an account with like Cisco and Matt's and employees. Um, Martin, my old employer had years of experience working in the business, but chose a bad spot when they opened this restaurant and they flopped in no time. Uh, there's this place that there's this thing. I forget the real estate term It's egress. Meaning if it's hard to get in your parking lot, people will not turn in. If someone's kind of like got to go around and kind of hang a Yui, that can kill your business. Even though this is something that may take 30 seconds, it could kill your business. So if you have a restaurant, the parking lot needs to be, eat, you know, parking has to be, that's another issue, parking. Uh, parking has to be easy. So just a lot of stuff that goes into it. How much would it cost to start a cart selling chili? I have no idea. You got to do that research. That was a pain too. Party bus limos, I'm out, peace y'all. All right, that's it. Links below the video. I just clicked on it. It works. And if someone clicks on it and doesn't work, uh, we'll probably, you know, just email my assistant at hustlerskungfu at gmail.com and we'll hook you up. Just say, hey, the link didn't work and I want the deal that Glendon had in the video. The extended Black Friday deal, which expires today. So anyone that comes after this, it is a thousand dollars. So don't go there and like, oh no, freak out. I'm telling you right now. So G26 business courses. And we get to talk about your business. Yeah, you'll get one console out of that. All right. Doesn't look like there's any more questions. All right, I'm gonna shut this puppy down. Hopefully everybody had a great holiday. I'm out. <laughs>